Hi, now we are discussing hybridization by using the valence bond theory. Okay, right? So many aspirants of chemistry on a CSIR or GATE or DL uh, set or LS anything. The things that the physical chemistry part is a nightmare and it is more true for the non-maths aspirants of chemistry okay that's why i have decided to consider the non-maths aspirants of chemistry and i want to give the basic mathematical part as also in coordinated with the physical chemistry concept lecture and problems okay right just here we know that the hybridization that is the linear combinations of appropriate s p d atomic orbitals which can result hybrid orbitals okay that is simply linear combination of atomic orbitals results hybrid orbitals or molecular orbitals now just consider the linear sp hybrid orbital or linear sp hybrid orbitals so just check here involvement of s and p orbitals okay so for s we know that it is spherical in shape so that is 2s here we are considering uh, 2s and 2p so 2s orbital or atomic orbital is overlapping with 2p atomic orbital and resulting the hybrid orbital that is sp hybrid orbital and if you observe it the signs are toward that means from negative to positive sign it is towards right side okay so just observe carefully and in the next orientation in which the s orbital is same because it is spherical spherical in shape that's why there will be no uh, variations in orientation but we have the variations in orientation of p orbital because it is having two lobes and dumbbell with uh, a positive wind negative signs okay right in the second overlapping of uh, 2p with 2s resulting a hybrid sp orbital where the signs are from uh, negative negative sign to positive sign towards a uh, left side okay right so these two different orientations of uh, s and p orbit atomic orbitals resulting two sp uh, orbitals here okay so just observe graphically here and uh, if you see in uh, on the first representation of a uh, graph in which so the p orbital is on the positive sign or positive coordinate sign on that x axis and in the second one so the p orbital lobe which is on the negative sign on that x axis okay so that means simply here the directionality is different in the two different overlapping of the p orbitals in uh, with the uh, s orbitals okay so which are resulting two sp hybrid orbitals right and for these two sp hybrid orbitals we can write wave functions or the orbital wave function that is psi1 as 1 by under root 2 pi s plus 1 by under root 2 pi p and psi2 is equal 1 by under root 2 pi s minus 1 by under root 2 pi p okay here psi1 indicating hybrid orbital and psi2 indicating another hybrid orbital and here pi s indicating atomic orbital of s orbital okay simply atomic s orbital and pi p indicating uh, pi p indicating uh, atomic p orbital okay right and just observe here 1 by under root 2 in uh, these two psi1 and psi2 hybrid orbitals are indicating normalization coefficients okay right now so we need to know what is orthogonality and what is normalization okay so this is the basic uh, basic uh, step we need to know to understand the uh, orbitals here okay so an orbital to be acceptable it must follow or obey two properties they are orthogonality and normalization okay first we need to check for orthogonality or 
uh, orthogonal here. So what is orthogonal? Simply it indicating that the integral of the product of an orbital with any other orbital is equal to zero. So just observe mathematical expression of it. An integration of uh, the orbital psi n and uh, with psi m. Here the psi n and psi m are not equal. That means there are different orbitals or different wave functions of the orbitals. Okay. So that means here n is not equal to m. Okay. So integration of psi n and uh, psi m d tau or dou tau resulting zero. Then those two orbitals are orthogonal. Okay, and they are uh, obeying orthogonal rule. Okay, right here, do tau simply indicating that the integral is taking all over the space of that orbitals psi n and psi m. Okay, right. Next, what is normalization? So normal normalization simply indicating that the integral of the product of an orbital with itself is equal to one. Okay, so the mathematical expression of it can be written as integration of psi n psi n d tau equals to one. Here, so the the two wave functions or the orbital wave functions are same here. That means n is equal to n. That means whenever the product of orbital with itself on integration results one, then the orbital is simply normalized. Okay, right. Now we must find normalization coefficients that satisfy above condition that means here orthogonality and normalization next the atomic orbitals here pi considered to be orthonormal that means they should follow the orthogonality and orthonormalization or simply normalization okay example of orthogonality of psi 1 and psi 2 so here we are taking the psi 1 and psi 2 of uh, sp hybridized orbitals Okay, so for an integration of psi 1 and psi 2 d tau, here psi 1 is different um, wave function of the orbital and psi 2 is different um, wave function of the particular different orbital. Okay, right. An integration of it, so we have taken for psi 1, uh, 1 by under root 2 pi s plus 1 by under root 2 pi p and for psi 2 we have taken 1 by under root 2 pi s minus 1 by under root 2 pi p d uh, dot tau. Okay, right. An integration of it, so the value 1 by 2 under root 2 comes out as 1 by 2 and an integration so we can write uh, pi s into so here pi s and pi s d tau minus 1 by 2 integration of pi s pi p d tau plus 1 by 2 integration of pi s pi p d tau minus 1 by 2 integration of pi p pi p d tau okay right just observe just apply the two properties or the two rules okay so if we observe the first integration that is uh, pi s pi s d tau or dou tau okay and here the two are same that means the atomic orbital is simply s orbital okay so whenever the two wave functions of the s orbitals are same here they should result one only because then only the s orbital uh, the s uh, the atomic s orbital should be uh, will be uh, normalized okay so that's why we need to take one for this integration so one by two into one minus 1 by 2 so if you observe this integration uh, where we have the atomic orbitals pi s and pi p so here we have two different atomic orbitals hence whenever two different atomic orbitals the product of um, um, two different atomic orbitals on integration they should result zero then only the wave, the um, wave functions of the particular atomic orbitals are orthogonal okay right so that's why the, the results zero here 1 by 2 zero and same apply on the uh, third one here integration so we have different um, atomic uh, s and p orbitals hence it results zero and on the fourth one if we apply so we have uh, two atomic orbitals of p or same hence result one okay after that we can get zero so just observe an integration of psi 1 and psi 2 the two different uh, uh, hybrid orbitals are resulting zero that means these two sp hybrid orbitals are orthogonal to each other okay then only they are acceptable orbitals next just apply our applications of valence bond theory on linear molecules just take here beryllium hydride if you observe the ground state electronic configuration of beryllium it has uh, two electrons in s and zero electrons in p okay and if we consider the first excited state of beryllium so one of s electron can enter into the p and then it has two 
S P hybrid orbitals. Okay, just observe beryllium on its first exit state is having two S P hybridized orbitals and which can overlap with the S orbital of two hydrogens and form the molecule, the linear molecule, okay, with 180 degrees, okay, with the two sigma bonds with beryllium and hydrogens, which can be represented orbitally like this, okay, right. Now, application of valence bond theory on trigonal planar molecule, just taking the bonding in BH3, just observe the boron with its um, ground state, so it is having two SI, SI electrons and one in P, electron, P orbital, okay. So, on first exit state, one of S electron can enter into 2P, so then it has a, a 1s1 and 2s2 okay right in this condition so on first exit state of boron is having sp2 hybrid orbitals how many three sp2 hybrid orbitals are there which can overlap with the s orbital of three hydrogens and forms three sigma bonds with the bond angle 120 degrees okay right now so the three sp2 orbitals uh, can be represented so mathematically as psi 1 is equal to 1 by under root 3 uh, pi s minus 1 by under root 6 pi p x plus 1 by under root 2 pi p y for psi 2 equals 1 by under root, uh, root 3 pi s minus 1 by under root 6 pi p x minus 1 by under root 2 pi p y and psi 3 is equal to 1 by under root 3 pi s plus 2 by under root 6 pi p x okay right and here if you observe we have different signs on the uh, uh, coefficients or normalization coefficients okay so the different signs are indicating the orientation difference of orbitals okay so as we said the p orbital is having different signs minus and plus so that means the orient the sign on particular coefficient is indicating the different overlap of that uh, sign particular lobe with that s orbital of hydrogen okay right so here if we observe the psi one in which so the px is having minus sign that means uh, so minus x okay so that means uh, with the uh, coordination with the x or uh, px axis px uh, orbital is overlapping with the s orbital from the lobe of negative sign okay so like that uh, the different signs are simply indicating uh, the orientation of uh, p orbitals uh, with the s orbital of particular hydrogen in bh3 okay right next one the coefficients in front of each atomic wave function simply indicating the amount of each atomic orbital that is used in hybrid orbital okay right as we said simply uh, here the coefficients are simply indicating the percentage of atomic orbital in hybridized orbital okay the sign of the coefficient indicating that the orientation of atomic orbitals okay and as we discussed before and each atomic orbital must be normal in columns and each hybrid orbital must be normal in rows. These are very important sentence. Just observe once again. Each or atomic orbital must be normal in columns. Just observe here we have three um, um, hybridized orbitals and with if we observe these are the columns and uh, which uh, on which we can observe the atomic uh, orbitals. Okay. And that means here the atomic orbital must be normalized and uh, the each hybrid orbital must be normal in rows that means we need to consider the rows also okay right so first consider the column for the atomic orbitals of um, sorry here s orbital and the and we need to take the squares of the coefficients why we need to take the squares of coefficient we know that psi cannot indicate the electron density okay so the electron the probability of electron density so to get the probability of electron density in the space we need to consider psi square so that's why here we need to take the uh, squares of the integrals here okay right so for we are considering the column uh, s orbitals atomic orbitals so we need to take the squares of integrals and we need to take the sum of all the squares of integrals okay so if we do that uh, if we take the squares of them we can get 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 resulting 1 that means the s orbitals um, is simply normalized that means the total s orbital is uh, using in the formation of molecular bonding in bh3 that means in the formation of hybridized orbitals okay right next check the px orbital 
uh, atomic orbital and we need to take the squares of integrals and we need to sum of them we need to take the sum of them and if we do that so resulting the 1 1 by 6 plus 1 by 6 plus 4 by 6 resulting 1 that means entire px orbital has been used in the hybridization now we need to uh, check another column in which uh, we have two in uh, coefficients so we need to take squares of them and we need to get the sum of them so if we do that we can get one so that means entire py orbital has also used in that hybridization of the molecule okay right now we need to check the rows that means uh, we need to check the uh, given hybrid orbital hybridized orbital is it normalized or not for that we need to follow same rule that is uh, we need to take the squares of the integrals and we need to take the sum of them so if we do that we can get 1 by 3 plus 1 by 6 plus 1 by 2 is equal to 1 so that is simply psi 1 is uh, normalized and the uh, psi 2 is also normalized and psi 3 is also normalized okay right so after this and we have a question in uh, uh, june 2018 csa or chemical sciences so on this um, uh, same um, concept so if we observe that question so you can uh, solve the answer you can solve the answer easily that is we need to find first the given uh, hybridized orbitals are normalized or not okay after checking normalization that means if the given hybridized orbital is normalized then it is eligible for the answer and after that if uh, and in the given CSR exam, that means June 2018, the in the problem, so the two options, that is second option and third option, or uh, or or normalized hybridized wave functions. Okay, um, that's why we need to consider the percentage of particular uh, orbital, s orbital or p orbital in its uh, hybridized its um, hybridized uh, orbitals. Okay, right. So if you do that and uh, you can get the answer simply or directly okay so in that we have sp2 hybrid we have given it sp2 hybridization and uh, if you if you check that so self uh, sorry here s orbital must be with 33 percent nearly 33 percent okay so it just apply um, just check the inter by taking the square of that particular coefficient okay and we need to observe the percentage of uh, percentage character of that particular orbital if it uh, simply equals to 33 percent then uh, that is the correct option for the answer okay right and if you are if you like the videos and uh, if you want to get more concept lectures then just uh, click on the uh, chemosis.online and join a course on csr or gate chemistry or jldl or the all other thank you